No, friends, that title is not clickbait. We were able to get a 20% performance increase on our Ryzen 7 3700X system by just tweaking a few things, and it looks pretty gosh dang good. Something that you should definitely consider if you're going to be building a new Ryzen 3000 system. So we're gonna go over that after I tell you about today's video sponsor, Monday.com. In case you haven't heard of them, Monday.com is the ultimate team management tool. It is the reason why we can keep everything flowing here on UFD Tech and our hot news channel. We're producing between eight and nine videos a week, and it would be very difficult to keep up with it if we didn't have Monday.com in our tool belt. It allows all six of us who work on the production team to make sure that we have everything going on, but it scales to whatever you need, whether it's two people working on a project or hundreds of people in a business. Monday.com is perfect as a team management tool for your business. It saves companies time because you don't have to have meetings about every little thing. You can just put it in to monday.com and that way everybody is saving their time you're saving the company money and i cannot tell you how much easier it's made our life here at ufd tech so if you're interested in getting the perfect team management tool for your company check out monday.com at the link in the video description and you can save eight percent off using our link down below so big thanks to monday.com for sponsoring this video and for being the only reason why we can actually keep things organized around here so my friends, Ryzen 3000 has come and AMD has made several improvements to try to decrease the latency on these processors. And one of the reasons why they had to focus on that is because Ryzen uses multiple core complexes that have to cross talk to each other in order to make sure that everything is working. So if you're trying to use a lot of cores, they have to communicate with each other and they do that through something called Infinity Fabric. And that was a huge bottleneck on first and second gen Ryzen was the intercommunication between core complexes. And AMD has spent a lot of time reconfiguring that and lowering that latency. And what we have found is that you can get significant differences from going from one RAM speed all the way up to another one. And the reason this happens is because it increases your infinity fabric speed. AMD has made it so that if you go over 3,733 megahertz on your RAM kit, it will decouple the infinity fabric speed and then make it so that there's actually higher latency than if you were just running it at a lower RAM speed. There might be certain applications where higher RAM speed but lower infinity fabric speed will make sense, but we're not covering those today. So we decided to go ahead and test RAM from 2133, which is a typical low-end DDR4 kit, all the way up to 3600, which is probably the highest-end typical DDR4 kit that you can get. And we have ours provided by G-Skill. This is their Trident Z Neo. This is the new stuff that they have out for AMD. It has cast latency of 161616. 16, 18, and it performed pretty gosh dang well, but we were actually able to get significant performance differences with our Ryzen 7 3700X just by introducing higher RAM speed. However, that wasn't the initial point of today's video. I was actually trying to do an overclocking guide for the Ryzen 7 3700X, and what started off as me manipulating RAM turned into something that I thought was interesting enough to show everybody and to show just how important higher RAM speed could be to you if you're on Ryzen. So we started out with 2133 megahertz and I did several different tests. I started with Cinebench, we did Time Spy, and then we did a run of Assassin's Creed Odyssey with our 2080 Super from Palette. This is their Game Rock White. This thing is gorgeous, by the way. Anyways, we did that at 1080p high and what we got in the initial testing with 2133 megahertz isn't terrible. 83 FPS at 1080p high, it's pretty decent with the 2080 Super. But then when we were able to increase the RAM speed incrementally, what we found is that in Cinebench, it made no difference whatsoever. We actually only ended up seeing a 2.5% increase from 3600 down to 2133. So that's not great. However, in Time Spy CPU tests, we were able to get a 22% uplift by just increasing the RAM speed and nothing else. And then in Assassin's Creed Odyssey with 1080p high on the 2080 Super, we went from 83 FPS at 2133 megahertz all the way up to 100.5 as the average, a 20.94% increase. However, one of the great things is that we also saw a huge uplift in the 1% and 0.1% lows. We saw a 10 FPS 
FPS difference between 1% lows, but then a 15 FPS difference in 0.1% lows. So that the lowest frames that were happening while we were running Assassin's Creed Odyssey were just under 60 FPS, 59.4, which in case you've been playing a game recently, dipping under 60 FPS dramatically changes how you can view it. So the fact that at 3,600 megahertz, we didn't see that de decrease made it a different gaming experience than if we were actually running at lower RAM speed than 3,600. So that's in a very CPU bound scenario. Time Spy CPU test is obviously hitting the CPU really hard. Assassin's Creed Odyssey is more of a CPU bound game, but what happens when the GPU is the bottleneck? Well, we decided to test it out at 1440p Ultra with the same exact game, and we saw a 4% increase going from 2133 3600. So there are still increases to be made, even when the GPU is the bottleneck, it's hitting 100%. It's actually, uh, you still have more room to grow with the RAM speed increase. And then on a lower end side of things, so this is obviously a $700 card. A lot of people have a 1080 Ti, a lot of people have the 2080 Super, that's fine. But what about the more mid-tier, lower end options? Probably more mid-tier than anything. The GTX 1660 cards in the $200 region. Well, when we did our testing going from 2133 to 3600, we actually saw a 7% uplift on the GTX 1660, which again, is quite decent. That increase isn't just limited to gaming. You can find it in other productivity stuff. I decided to test one of our hot news renders, which in case you're not familiar, we have hot news on a separate channel. You can check out right up there. We do those videos every single day. So getting those things edited quickly and rendered quickly are important to us to make sure that we're not wasting time in between uh, when we actually are able to get those out. And what we found is rendering a video at 2133 megahertz with a 1660 as the CUDA accelerator, we went from from 18 and a half minutes down to 17 minutes with 3600 megahertz RAM speed. So we got a minute and a half of our time back, but that also doesn't come into the productivity increases that you're gonna see on timeline rendering when you're actually editing the videos. That's something that's really hard to quantify how well you're actually able to scrub through the timeline. And especially since we edit our videos at two to four times speed in Premiere, that means that we're actually getting less stuttering than we were previously on the 2133 megahertz RAM speed. I'm just gonna move that over here. So it's actually quite intriguing. In instances where your CPU bound on Ryzen, you can see huge increases by just increasing your RAM speed. And one of the things that AMD has done is that they've allowed you to decouple infinity fabric speed, which is what you're trying to increase versus the RAM speed on the new Ryzen 3000 chips. However, at least on our ASRock board, we actually couldn't set the infinity fabric speed higher than what our RAM speed was because it just wouldn't, like the RAM speed has to be faster than the infinity fabric speed. So we tested everything on this ASRock X570 Tai Chi. And as I mentioned, the G-Skill Trident Z Neos, 3600 megahertz, and then the 2080 Super and the 1660 and this Corsair Crystal 680X. So if you're trying to get high refresh rate gaming with your new Ryzen setup, it actually is hugely beneficial to pick up a higher rated RAM kit. However, even if you're not, it still might be worth it for all the other gains that you're gonna get in general productivity. Even if you're in a more GPU bound scenario, such as 1440p Ultra with your 2080 Super, 4% increase actually isn't too terrible if we quickly just look at the math behind things. So one of the reasons why some people might spurn getting a higher rated RAM kit over a lower rated RAM kit is because of the price difference. If you just look at this kit of Corsair Vengeance LPX 2130, versus the 3600 equivalent, what we find is that it's a 38% more expensive kit to get the 3600 megahertz. And 38% for a 20% performance increase is not worth it no matter how you slice it. And especially if you're getting a 4% performance increase at 1440p, it just doesn't make any sense. However, that only works if you're buying RAM by itself, which if you're just actually upgrading to Ryzen 3000, then you have to change the equation. Ryzen 3000, let's say you're getting a 3700X and you're getting the RAM kit. Well, that's $402 versus $430, which means that it's a 7% price difference. 7% price difference for 20% more performance or 7.5% more performance in let's say editing, that actually makes sense. But let's say you get a CPU 
RAM and you're upgrading the motherboard, $100 motherboard, let's just say that for, for argument's sake. Well, that's $502 versus $530, and that's a 5.5% price difference. Or if you're building a new $1,000 PC, it is a 2.8% difference which you're going to get back in the RAM speed increase. Or if you're building a $2,000 PC with a $700 graphics card, it is a 1% price difference for you to get the 3600 versus the 2133. It makes sense in most scenarios if you're upgrading to get the 3600. Maybe not if you're on 2133 already and you have the RAM, but it could be worth it for you to sell that and pick up the 3600. My advice is, is that if you're on Ryzen 3000 and you have a motherboard that is rated to support it, get the fastest rated RAM kit that you could possibly get up to 3733, because after that you're introducing latency. And obviously there are more technical analyses that are out there analyzing the nanosecond response time of the Infinity Fabric versus uh, when it's coupled versus decoupled. That's not really the point here. The point that I wanted to make today was that you can get a huge performance increase for very little extra money on Ryzen 3000 if you get the best rated RAM possible. If you get 3200 versus 2133, we saw an 18.5% uplift. It was pretty dang decent regardless of where you are, just getting fast the fastest RAM that you can afford and that can actually work in your system is the advice that we're gonna give to you today. So that's it for today's video. Hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Check out our sponsor, monday.com. In case you're trying to manage your team, it is the perfect team management tool, no matter what side you are. Two people collaborating versus hundreds of people in a business, it is perfect for whatever your needs are and it has made our lives so much easier. So use our link in the video description to save 8%. That's it. Get subscribed to stay up to date on all of our tech related content. Hit that notification bell to make sure that you never miss a video that's dropping. And we're still gonna be doing the overclocking guide on the 3700X. I just got kind of carried away with the RAM speed testing and wanted to see how big of a difference it makes and it can save us a lot of time in a lot of different instances. So I'm excited for it. Uh, yeah, that's it. I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see your smiling faces again in the next one. Bye. Yeet.